Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we started with the diffusion equation, which is also used for the heat distribution equation or the heat flow equation. Here's the equation. K some constant times the second partial derivative of u with respect to x is equal to the first partial derivative of u with respect to t. And that's why we couldn't use the normal ways that, that we've learned so far in solving partial differential equations, because we have a second order on one side of the equation and a first order on the other side of the equation. But we did say that we could find a good approximation, an easy solution, by letting the right side equal a constant. So we kind of knew where we're going, so we just said, okay, let's make that a constant, a, and therefore, when we then divide both sides by k, the constant on the left side, we then rewrite the equation as the second partial derivative of u with respect to x is equal to a over k, which on the right side we simply have a constant. Now we're going to look at this constant a little bit more. Let's say that this constant has dimensions of length squared over time, and that is actually the case if we need the original equation to come out correctly. Notice if we divide the right side by the second partial derivative of u with respect to x, then this would have units of of uh, time, and this would have units of distance squared, and therefore, when we, um, when we then want to have a k where this is dimensionally correct, the dimensions for k must equal length squared over time. So that means that kt over x squared and x squared over k times t, they have to be dimensionless expressions. So let's then call some other variable alpha equal to x squared over k times t. We know that this is dimensionless. And then we're going to look for a solution in the form where the, the solution is equal to some function of alpha rather than some function of p like we did before. Now alpha will take on the form of x squared over k times t. We do realize then if we take the second partial derivative of x with, of u with respect to x, the x disappears and we just end up with a constant and that's what we want right here so we end up with a constant so that seems to be the right thing to do. All right, then we're going to write the partial of u with respect to x which can be written in terms of the derivative of, alpha, of the function of alpha with respect to alpha times the partial derivative of alpha with respect to x. So we know that that's kind of like the chain rule that we're allowed to use and therefore we can say that the that the partial derivative of alpha with respect to x can then be written as 2x over kt, which is what we have over here, times the derivative of the function of alpha with respect to alpha intact right there. Then we take the second derivative. So now we need to use the chain rule because we have, a, or the product rule because we have a product right here. So we're going to take the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now when we take the derivative of this, just like we did before, we can say that that is equal to, we're going to take the, I'm sorry, we're going to take the derivative with respect to alpha of the derivative with respect to alpha, which means that's going to be the second derivative of this with respect to alpha times the derivative of alpha, which is 2x over kt, so that means we're going to have 2x over kt squared, there's two of them, times the second derivative of the function of alpha with respect to alpha plus 2 over kt times the first derivative of the function of alpha with respect to alpha. So that's how we now have an expression of the second derivative of u with respect to x in terms of the function of alpha and in terms of alpha itself because 2x over kt or x squared over kt is equal to alpha. So we know that this is now expressed more in terms of alpha than in terms of x and t. So going back to what we had over here, Notice that we can have a general solution that will satisfy these two equations. If we want to satisfy this equation right here, and we want to satisfy this equation right here at the same time, what are some of those general solutions we can think of? And notice to satisfy this equation, we have this as our general solution, which we saw in the previous video. It is a over 2k x squared plus x times gt plus ht. We had a constant there, but we don't need it. And then to satisfy this equation right here, a general solution can be a times t plus some function of x. Notice when we take the derivative of this with respect to t, this disappears and we simply get a is what we have over there, so it satisfies that equation. If we take the first and second derivative of, let's see, of this equation right here, take the first derivative, we get 2a over 2k, the 2's cancel out, so we have a over k times x, 
Take the second derivative, we simply get a over k, which is what we have over here. Take the first derivative of this, we simply get gt. Take the second derivative, that disappears. Take the first derivative of this, disappears. So this also satisfies this equation. So we have a general solution to satisfy this equation and a general solution to satisfy this equation. But now, of course, we need to find a general solution that satisfies both equations at the same time. And how are we going to do that? Well, we can say that we let g of t be a constant, which can also be set equal to zero if we need to. All right, so that means that this is going to be a constant, and it can also be zero. Now, then if we do that, we can let the general solution that satisfies both equations to be a over 2k times x squared plus g of x plus at plus some sort of constant. So if we now take the first derivative of this with respect to t, this disappears, this disappears, this gives us a, and this disappears. So that gives us the solution to this equation, or at least it equals that equation. If we take the first derivative of this with respect to x, we get 2a over 2k times x. The 2's cancel out. We take the second derivative, then uh, we simply get a over k, which is what we have over here. We take the first derivative of this with respect to, to x, and that gives us some function of x. Take the second derivative, we get another function of x. But if we allow this to go to 0, well, that would be OK. That will work then. We don't have to worry about it. So we have to have this to account for this portion of the general solution, but we can let that go to zero. So if we make this disappear and that disappear, we're OK. We take the first derivative of this with respect to x, that disappears. We take the first derivative of this with respect to x, that disappears as well. So the idea is that if we let g of x go to zero, so we don't have this part of the general solution, then we have a general solution that um, that will satisfy both equations, so essentially we want this to go to zero so, or be the kind of function where if we take the first and second derivative it disappears, then we're fine with that and we don't have to worry about it. So at least we now have something to start with and we're going to use that to follow to find the solution to this particular partial differential equation.